voting on the referendum. And just remind you, she'll be talking to George Kegoro, who is the executive director at the Kenya Human Rights Commission, just to try and understand, is the country ready for a referendum? Is the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission ready to hold a referendum? But uh, before we have that discussion with George, I'd like us uh, to have a look at another story that was prepared by my colleague Duncan Kaembe, because it is emerging that calls for a referendum to amend the constitution might be the next political battle that might just see like in 2010 William, William Arutu, now Deputy President, lock horns with ODM leader Rilo Dinga once again. Now, two, appoint, uh, the, uh, two appointment, rather, of the two leaders, that is Majority Leader Arden Dwale and Minority Leader James Orengo, are pushing calls for and against a referendum in what seems to be a message from their re respective matters. Drum beats for what might be a possible referendum for constitutional amendment are beating. CIA Senator and Minority Leader James Orengo says the hour has come. And inclusivity cannot be addressed unless we tackle the system of government. And that means that parliamentary system, we must turn back to a system of a parliamentary system of democracy if you are going to have inclusivity in the Republic of Kenya. And already Third Alliance Party leader Dr. Ekuru Aukot has started collecting a million signatures, being the threshold required to compel IEBC to conduct a referendum. His eyes trained on representation in parliament. To reduce your cost of running parliament to only 5 billion. In order to reduce your cost, we have to reduce the cost of the cost of 1,416. But speaking in his Garissa township backyard, Majority Leader Eden Duale says referendum calls are alien to Jubilee Party. Sentiments echoed by Tharakanithi Governor Mudhominjuki. Kiongozi moja anaitwa Uhuru Mwegae Kenyatta. Ako sa hii New York. Atakuja kesho. Sasa huyo haja tuambia maneno ya mabadiliko ya katiba. Mimi nauliza pesa ya kufanya referanda katika Kenya hii sa hii. Itatoka wapi? What remains to be seen is whether these calls for and against will gain momentum with the country eyeing 2022 at a distance. Duncan Hemba, KTA News. All right, now that story by our reporter Duncan Haimba leads us to our morning discussion with uh, uh, George uh, Kegoro, who is the executive director at the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Uh, Mr. Kegoro, thank you so much for joining us here on KTN News Center, and good morning. Um, first things first. Good morning. There... Good morning. Is the country ready for a referendum? Uh... It's, it's a difficult uh, question to answer, but it's also a simple question at the same time. Obviously, the country is not ready for a referendum. Um, I think what is going on at the political level is a demonstration of a failure of leadership. Every time a country or the country has had uh, major problems, people come together to agree, first of all, on what those problems are and what the possible solutions might be and what approaches uh, could be employed in putting in place those solutions. We went into elections last year. We marched out of those elections and the country uh, was extremely polarized and uh, was breaking up. And that was a moment when people should have come together to talk about our experience through the election and what the future might hold in view of that experience. What we got instead was the handshake and now what and the building the B building bridges initiative. The building bridges initiative, whatever its intentions, is a unilateral action on the part of the president and the leader of the opposition, Raila Odinga. No one else was involved in conceiving that. 
no one has been involved in deciding its agenda and in, the, in selecting the people who are going to carry out that agenda. And we are now being told that in, a, in, in, the, in the context of the building bridges, that is where decisions about a referendum uh, are being processed. So we have got different people pursuing different objectives. There's no agreement, there's, there's no collective agreement within the country as to what is the problem. And there are many problems. There are problems to do with the, uh, as, uh, an economic stress that, that is also leading to a significant social stress and responses to that are part of what uh, is leading to calls for referendum. But we also had the original problems to do with the elections and to do with the fact that we are really, really polarized and very angry with one another. But there is no place where people have convened uh, to agree on what of the many problems we face as a country is the most urgent and what the solution to, those, uh, to that problem might be. So the call for a referendum is uh, another example of people t talking at cross purposes. We are all addressing our, whatever we conceive to be the problems at cross purposes and uh, there can be no readiness for a referendum in a context where it isn't agreed what the problem is how and, 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 and it isn't also agreed on what the solution to that problem is. It is an act of unilateralism that is cancelling out an original act of, of unilateralism on the part of the dominant political players and I, all this leads to the, what I said at the beginning, there's a failure of political leadership in the country. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gekoro, I mean, when you're talking about um, political players need to agree on what the problem is, I was about to ask you, should you hold a referendum? Then what should the question be, the question that should be posed on Kenyans? I think what we've... What we've done in the past, take the example of 2007 and 2008, eh? uh, when we had the, the post-election violence, and there was, uh, there was a, a very significant, it was clear that the country was in a significantly difficult political moment. What happened at that, that time is the country came together. It was assisted by, by, by foreign role players, the African Union and, uh, and, 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 and its friends. We convened in extraordinary as uh, um, in an extraordinary situation and that convening was uh, basically the mediation process that uh, that was taking place at at at, uh, at, uh, at the serena and through that process there there was a definition of what the problem was and who should be involved in solving the problems of the post election violence and what uh, what the process should look like and what the outcome should look like what the guarantees of uh, whatever has been agreed on uh, would be and then uh, a roadmap was put in place that methodically addressed uh, the problems as, as, had, as had been defined. What I expect is a similar approach. What I expected uh, that the country would get into is a similar approach after the last elections. People should come together, not just on the terms of Uhuru Kenyatta and, and Raila Odinga because they have happened to be the dominant political leaders. They should come together on all our terms to, uh, and everybody to say what uh, do they perceive to be the uh, priority problems that the country ought to be addressing. Uh, based on that, we can agree on what the, uh, what might be the priority problems and and what might be the way to try and address those problems so calling for a referendum is precipitate it is not something that uh, uh, that can be matched to an agreement as to what the problem is so it only is going to deepen uh, the crisis that the country is going through so, Mr. Uh, Gekoro, you're saying that um, it should not be a situation whereby we just follow what the president uh, says, President Uhuru Kenyatta and the opposition leader, Raila Odinga. So who is the person behind this push for a referendum and why? Now, you see, that's part of the problem uh, that we have. People see it in, uh, in, uh, in dark smoke-filled rooms, I imagine, they decide for themselves what the problem is and they decide uh, what the solution is. So th the first problem that the call for a referendum suffers from is a, a, a lack of full disclosure. We don't know who is behind it and we don't know what their real objectives are. 
one suspects that all these uh, maneuvering for or against uh, a referendum has got uh, vested interests. Those who are rejecting, those who are proposing a referendum do so for reasons other than the reasons that they state. And then those who are opposing it, oppose it for reasons other than the reasons that, they, that are stated. So what we need is uh, all the cards to be played on the table. So it's clear what the interests are and the, the interests that are um, most dominant at the moment, which are the interests of um, the, 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 the players in Jubilee and the players in, uh, in NASA, they are not the only interests that are, that are, that are possible, or that are at play. There's also the interest of the ordinary people. Uh, what we have right now is the interest of the elites that are being put forward by, uh, by the people who've got access to media and so on and so forth. But what people really need, what ordinary people need is a way of getting out of the economic stress that they are currently experiencing. It is a way of getting out of the violence that is visited on them in so many different ways. It is a way of getting out of the insecurity that they feel that surrounds them um, during elections, but also oh. on an everyday basis. Oh. And uh, I saw the stories oh. about that in, in, in the north of the country. So okay. those are the, the needs of the country. Okay.